During this anniversary for the Marine Affairs Program, I've been requested to talk about UNEP Regional Seas Program as it is being implemented through the Regional Seas Conventions, Action Plans, as well as Protocols. It's my intention in the next 30 minutes to cover uh, a wide range uh, of issues, if any. So to begin with, Regional Seas Conventions and Action Plans uh, last year actually celebrated 40th anniversary since the establishment of the program in 1974. And since then, it has become a UNEP flagship program. The program was implemented through regional frameworks to co for cooperative management and protection of the marine, uh, regional and shared uh, coastal environment, as well as management of the natural resources for sustainable development among states with a shared coast. The program itself uh, also is promoted by UNEP. It has grown over the years, uh, and to date, uh, the program covers 18 regions globally, with over 143 participating countries across 13 regions, uh, all of which uh, make together the entire program of conventions, protocols, and action plans which have been either established by UNEP or negotiated under the UNEP auspices. 13 regions key uh, include the Black Sea, the wider Caribbean, the East Asian Seas, the Eastern Africa, the South Asian Seas, the Ropne er uh, Sea area, which includes uh, the uh, coast of Kuwait, Iran, Iraq, Bahrain, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates, the Mediterranean, the Northeast Pacific, the Northwest Pacific, the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, the Southeast Pacific and Pacific and Western Africa. All those compose the 13 region. And the map there shows the 18 regional seas regions uh, depicted by different uh, colors. So what are the regional seas action plans? And I've mentioned here action plans, conventions, and protocols. What we'll see that the Regional Seas Program is composed of these action plans, conventions, and protocols, which has, have evolved over the years and have had all a common methodology and pattern in their development, followed similar process for their development. As mandated by UNEP governing body, the then governing council, of course now it has changed into United Nations uh, Environment Assembly, and using the UNEP's leadership, uh, technical expertise, its catalytic role, uh, and convening power, together with seed funds, UNEP has initiated and supported the entire many consultative uh, negotiation processes for the development of the regional seas action plans. UNEP has ensured that consistent integrated approach was followed in the development of these action plans, they have been safeguarded and main, uh, by the maintenance of an interdisciplinary character of environmental problems in collaboration with other international and regional bodies. UNEP has acted as an overall coordinator and facilitator for the development of all these different instruments under the Regional Seas Program. The Regional Seas Action Plan so far uh, include for the Mediterranean, there's Mediterranean Action Plan, Caribbean Action Plan, West uh, Africa and Central Africa Action Plan, East African Action Plan, Southeast Asia Action Plan, and Northwest Pacific Action Plan. All these are uh, managed by UNEP or administered by UNEP and are all structured in a similar format in terms of content, which normally begins with the components of environmental assessments, environmental management, environmental legislation, institutional arrangements, and financial arrangements. They are then followed by a strong legal framework in the form of regional cooperation uh, treaty or convention, which is followed or associ with associated implementing legally binding protocols dealing with specific marine pollution problems. Although majority of the regional seas action plans have led to the development of an umbrella legally binding framework 
or in the name of conventions and implementing protocols, we have few action plans which have remained at the state of action plan. Uh, and these are uh, principally the South uh, East Asia, the Northwest Pacific, uh, we, the two are administered by UNEP, but there's also the South Asian Seas Action Plan administered by the South Asia Environment Program, or SACEP. Of the 13 regions, which uh, I had mentioned earlier on, UNEP administers and manages six regional uh, conventions plus 15 of the total 42 legally binding implementing regional seas protocols. The six conventions plus the two protocols are the Caribbean Action Plan, which was adopted 1981, uh, with a legally binding convention adopted 1983, but with it, it has four protocols, one dealing with oil spills protocol, 1983, specially protected areas uh, protocol, 1990, and pollution from land-based sources protocol of 1999. The other action plan is the East Af Eastern African Protocol adopted 1985, together with a, a framework convention which was uh, uh, amended uh, in 2010, and this is the Convention on the Prote Protection, Management, and Development of the Marine and Coastal Environment of the Eastern African Region. It has three uh, protocols, one related to protected areas of wild fauna and flora, 1985, uh, protocol on combating marine pollution in cases of uh, emergency, 1985, and 2010, there was a new protocol on land-based sources of marine pollution. Another convention uh, action plan first is for the West and Central African Action Plan, which also has a convention adopted together with an action plan in 1981 uh, with uh, two protocols, a protocol on marine pollution in cases of emergency, 1985, and 2012, they adopted a protocol on land-based sources of marine pollution. Then we have the Mediterranean Action Plan, which was adopted in 1975, but also amended and updated in 1995. And this was uh, followed by a number of protocols, namely a protocol related to dumping from ships and aircraft protocol of 1976, amended 1995. Also a protocol on oil pollution and other harmful substances adopted 1976, amended 2002. Protocol also amended uh, 1995 on pollution on land-based sources of uh, marine uh, protocol, LBS as abbreviated. Also a protocol on specially protected areas and biodiversity protocol. Offshore pollution protocol, transboundary movement of hazardous waste protocol, and a protocol on integrated coastal zone management. The chart shows, uh, basically puts together all the uh, action plans, regional seas conventions, plus all the protocols, uh, trying to separate those which are administered by UNEP and those which are not administered by UNEP, just to be able to give us that growth of the regional seas and uh, action plans. Moving from the action plans, these action plans were adopted uh, by the member states. I've indicated six of them are managed directly by UNEP, but they've also established an institutional arrangement to monitor the implementation of those action plans and later, of course, also uh, monitoring the implementation of the conventions and the protocols. This institutional arrangement uh, for the global convention known as secretariats uh, for the regional seas is referred to as regional coordinating units. And UNEP therefore manages six of them, four for the four legally binding uh, instruments. And this is for the uh, East Africa, which is the uh, Mediterranean, the Caribbean, and the West Africa. But also two action plans, Northwest Pacific and Southeast Asia, those ones are action plans, but also have regional coordinating units 
administered by UNEP, uh, but then they are hosted by countries in different locations. Uh, in addition to these regional coordinating units, which is one office for per each uh, convention or action plan. In addition to the regional uh, coordinating units, all the conventions have also established regional activity centers, and these are actually the implementation arm of these conventions and protocols. Uh, each of them have established uh, different locations. They are actually uh, funded by governments and they are considered as national institutions staffed by the nationals of the hosting country, although of course they take different activities as approved by the conferences of the parties or uh, intergovernmental meetings of those conventions or the action plans. At national level, in addition, each party or member state of the convention or the series of action plans are required to establish or designate a national focal point whose role is basically to oversee and monitor and follow up the implementation of these conventions and action plans at national level, but also at the same time serving as the channel of communication between the government and the regional coordinating unit. And the uh, table or chart now shows the number uh, of the regional uh, seas activity centers which have been established. And what you will notice for the Mediterranean, they have six of them and each center performing different function. Uh, the Northwest Pacific Action Plan has four uh, regional activity centers, while the others have only one. All these regional seas uh, conventions and action plans, plus their protocols, are fully integrated into the UNEP uh, regional seas program. Under the regional uh, seas program, program of work of UNEP is approved by its governing body. And therefore, they actually uh, completely different and we need to distinguish the regional seas conventions and action plans and other global uh, conventions on environment which a number of them are also administered by UNEP. If we look at, for instance, Convention on Biological Diversity, Convention on International Trade on Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, or Convention on Migratory Species, or the three chemical conventions on uh, prior informed consent, persistent organic pollutants, and transboundary movement of hazardous waste. Uh, all those are chemicals administered by UNEP. Global conventions have independent secretariats headed by executive secretaries. While for the regional seas, we have the regional coordinating units headed by coordinators. Hence that difference. And the regional seas conventions and action plans are fully integrated into the UNEP regional seas program, which is not the case with the global conventions on environment also administered by UNEP. In addition, uh, we also have regional marine species agreements and memorandums of understanding. Uh, also administered by UNEP, but negotiated under the fr a different framework. While the regional seas uh, scope is based on geopolitical boundaries, we have the four uh, regional marine species agreements and about seven non-legally binding regional seas instruments referred to as memorandum of understanding, also administered by UNEP, but of course they are not based on geopolitical boundaries as the regional seas conventions. These are focus on the conservation of specific migratory marine species within a particular marine uh, environment program, and they've all been negotiated under a global framework convention on the conservation of mig uh, migratory species of wild animals, also administered by UNEP. If I may give an example of which are these marine species agreements, we have four of them legally binding. One uh, uh, is an agreement on the conservation of small cetaceans of the Baltic, Northeast Atlantic, Irish, and Northeast uh, North Sea. Another legally binding agreement is the one on cetaceans of the Black Sea, Mediterranean Sea, and the contiguous Atlantic uh, area, also administered by UNEP, but is hosted by the government of Monaco, uh, abbreviated ACOBAMS. 
Another agreement is the one on the conservation of uh, seals in the Warden Sea, ministered and hosted by the government of Germany. And then the last fourth one is the agreement on the conservation of albatrosses and petresses administered and hosted by the government of Australia in Tasmania. Then we have a series of about seven memorandum of understanding. Although they are referred to as non-legally binding because they are MOUs or memorandum of understanding, but in terms of implementation for all intents and purposes, there is no distinction between the legally binding and non-legally binding. Anyway, the MOUs, we have one for the conservation of dugong and their habitats, hosted by the government of Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. We have an MOU on marine turtles of the Atlantic coast of Africa, administered directly under the Global CMS, or Convention on Migratory Species of Wild Animals. Then con uh, Convention for the Cetaceans and their Habitats of the Pacific region. Another one is the uh, Convention on Marine Turtles and their Habitats of the Indian Ocean in Southeast Asia. Uh, MOU on uh, Eastern Atlantic Population of the Mediterranean Monk Seals and their Habitats. Uh, the MOU for the uh, Migratory Sharks and the MOU for the man Manetee and Small Cetaceans of Western, Western Africa and Macoronesia and their habitats. Why the Regional Seas Program then has created this unique platform of collaboration? We are saying the Regional Seas Program has successfully provided a mechanism and platform for the countries to share, uh, countries which share a common uh, ocean to cooperate uh, and integrate uh, their, and to integrate their natural resource management for the marine and coastal areas. But also the program has proved quite successful as a mechanism and platform for countries sharing common seas and ocean, but with different political settings or different political ideology to be able to meet and discuss issues of common interest related to the management and the conservation of the marine environment. Also, it has become a unifying factor, the Regional Seas Program, in terms of bringing all these different countries from different geographical locations, uh, different uh, socioeconomic uh, backgrounds to discuss issues of common interest. But it has also been a viable platform uh, to also support and strengthen the regional cooperation and mechanism for the implementation of other global multilateral environmental agreements. For instance, regional seas conventions and action plans have been instrumental in the implementation of uh, international maritime organization uh, conventions related to marine pollution, also in terms of implementing the chemical, international chemical conventions uh, as far as chemicals into the ocean are concerned. Uh, very instrumental in terms of implementation of the conventions on the Stockholm Convention in Rotterdam, and this too deals with the persistent organic pollutants or prior informed consent, or the Basel Convention on Transboundary Movement of hazardous waste. Also, the entire marine biodiversity program of the Convention on Biological Diversity has been uh, uh, key using the Regional Seas Program for the implementation of this marine biodiversity program of the CBD. Uh, equally instrumental for the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, the World Heritage Convention, as well as the Convention on International Trade on Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, and more so, uh, we have a global uh, plan of action for land-based sources of marine pollution, also administered by UNEP and also very instrumental in the, uh, using the regional seas conventions and action plans for the implementation of this global action plan. And in fact, it has been instrumental in the development of all the uh, protocols which have been developed on the land-based sources of marine pollution. And from the two, uh, the appendix, uh, appendix one table we talked earlier on, one we should be able to see there are more protocols on land-based sources of marine pollution than other marine issues. And we can easily relate it then to this global plan of action, which has used 
these conventions uh, effectively for the development of those protocols. Furthermore, uh, the regional seas conventions and action plans have been instrumental in the implementation of uh, GEF uh, focal areas funded projects, particularly in the uh, portfolio of international waters, marine biodiversity, uh, the marine related issues for chemicals and land degradation. Uh, equally then, in terms of providing that the intellectual, the political, facilitative leadership and UNEP's funding, particularly seed funding for their initial development has been instrumental in further strengthening uh, cooperation uh, under the regional seas program, uh, which has led to this development of the number of uh, conventions and action plans. Although at the beginning when the, these conventions and protocols were negotiated under the regional seas program, it was the intention of the governing body of UNEP and UNEP that UNEP will only provide seed funds and it's a uh, convening power to have these conventions established with an intention to later hand it over to the parties and the member states themselves to sustain them. However, in practice, that has not been the case for all of the action plans and conventions. Uh, although it has been the case for some, but with the case, for instance, of the Southeast Asia um, Action Plan has not been the case. Equally, the East and African Action Plan, uh, as well as the West African Action and Central Africa Action Plan. Only recently, the West African Action Plan now is slowly becoming independent. It now has its own full-time coordinator, as well as a, a secretariat and uh, Côte d'Ivoire Abidjan. Uh, the Eastern African Action Plan and its convention, referred to as Nairobi Convention, uh, hosted by UNEP in Nairobi, also now slowly becoming independent and that the party is taking over full responsibility. But all this all is only happening now. The COPSI uh, or the Southeast Asia Action Plan, that has not been the case. The good thing is, and what the Regional Seas Program has done, is to create that systematic pattern which we see in all the conventions, all the articles incorporated in all the regional seas conventions have actually followed a similar pattern. Similar pattern in terms of the nature of the provisions. Just to give an example, they all have provided articles related to the geographical scope or coverage uh, or the geo, that which is based on the geopolitical grounds, the area which the convention covers, that marine region. They all have general provisions uh, whereby uh, it requires, for instance, it includes provisions like national sovereignty, independence, and non-interference uh, into each other's uh, internal affairs, or respect for the uh, present or future maritime claims as they are uh, indicated under the Law of the Sea Convention of 1982. All the conventions also have general uh, obligations whereby member states are expected to undertake certain measures either individually, jointly, or uh, regionally uh, or to deal with specific obligations to combat specific types of pollution. And you will see it is these specific types of pollution which are now leading to the increasing number of protocols being developed under a number of these regional seas conventions. And some of the issues which have been specifically mentioned in these articles relate to dumping from ships, land-based sources of pollution and activities, transboundary movement of hazardous waste, biological diversity, threatened and endangered species, Pro, uh, establishment of protected areas. And we have seen there are already protocols under certain conventions covering these specific marine pollutions. They also covers cooperation among the parties in order to combat specific types of marine pollution or environmental, environmental damages, and also requiring parties to develop or undertake uh, national legislative administrative measures uh, to put into effect the implementation of the conventions, including harmonization of their policies for the effective implementation of these regional seas. We also see all conventions 
including articles for the development of financial rules. They also include articles related to institutional arrangements, and this is where the quest issues of regional coordinating units, conference of the parties, and the bureau comes in. Uh, they all have provisions related to financial arrangements and support to the implementation of the conventions or the program. They also provide review mechanism processes uh, in terms of the requiring the parties, obliging the parties to submit national reports to the conferences of the parties. They establish compliance and enforcement regimes or call for that establishment, but only uh, the Mediterranean Convention or Barcelona Convention actually has established such a mechanism. They all have provisions related to sovereignty, uh, immunity of four ships and states operated uh, under, uh, I mean, states operated ships uh, and how then they are not affected by the regional seas conventions and action plans. And then what you will also notice on these uh, regional seas conventions is th those which were adopted after 1992 Rio Conference on United Nations Environment and Development, as well as uh, those which were amended after 1992 have basically also included general obligations which are included into, in the Agenda 21 or the Rio principles. So the newer, I will call them the newer conventions or the amended conventions have provisions related to principles of sustainable development, precautionary principle, polluter pays principle, uh, principle 10 related to access to information, justice, uh, and decision making, uh, participation in decision making, and environmental impact assessment, and all those principles under Agenda 21. So basically, it took into account developments in the field of international environmental law. I've already indicated that all conventions, including the action plans, do establish a monitoring mechanism in terms of an institutional mechanism in the name of the conference of the parties for the conventions or intergovernmental meetings of the parties for the action plans. If we move to the regional seas protocols, which this have been developed to further implement the conventions, but looking at specific uh, marine pollution uh, issue, they are equally legally binding and again, depending on the subject matter of the protocol, be it either land-based sources of pollution or uh, biodiversity or uh, pollution in cases of emergencies, again, just like the convention, the provisions follow the same pattern, follows the same type of articles and provisions. So there's that system, systematic uh, way of presenting these instruments. But of course, the implementation is the one which is unique to each region or each uh, marine environment region. So far, a total of 42 protocols do exist uh, related to different issues of marine pollution. Of the 42, 15 are under UNEP administered regional seas conventions, and 27 are administered by no other entities apart from UNEP. But we also have few which are still being negotiated and others are already adopted but not yet in force. And all these are shown in the table which we had seen earlier on. Having said all this, what can we conclude to have uh, uh, what has the Regional Seas Program over the last 40 years, for which last year we are celebrating, uh, has achieved or has succeeded to achieve? One, I think we can confidently say the growing number uh, uh, of the regional seas regions, we've said 18, with the growing number of participating countries in the regional seas, uh, in the, co the co participating coastal states, currently 143, and, and the regions making the UNEP regional seas program alone, the 13. So this number has grown over the years. In addition, we have seen over the years increasing number of the adopted regional seas and action plans. In total, we have 42 uh, regional seas conventions and action plans. Out of these 42, six of them are administered by UNEP, plus 15 regional seas protocols administered by UNEP, plus one global, pro, uh, global plan of action 
on land-based sources uh, of marine pollution, also administered by UNEP. Again, a major achievement. We are also seeing that uh, the regional seas conventions and action plans have successfully provided a viable platform for the countries with different socioeconomic and political uh, ideologies and settings being able to meet and discuss uh, these common marine uh, environmental challenges and to be able to seek common solutions. A major achievement. So it brings countries irrespective of political uh, settings to discuss these common issues which touch upon uh, the life uh, of the population of these coastal states. Another major achievement. We are also looking at the effective institutional mechanism which has been set up under the regional seas conventions and action plans which monitors not just the implementation but the enforcement. They've established the regional seas coordinating units. In addition, they've established the regional activity centers which are responsible for the actual implementation of specific either protocols or overall the convention at regional level. In addition, we have the national focal points which each party, each member states establishes at national level. You put all these together, are able to ensure effective implementation and enforcement of the regional seas conventions and protocols, a major achievement. We are seeing all of them have been integrated into a one UNEP regional seas program and a one UNEP regional, I mean UNEP uh, program of work. Again, major success. We have also indicated how effectively these conventions and action plans have been used as a mechanism to implement global multilateral environmental agreements like the three chemical conventions, Convention on Biological Diversity, Convention on Migratory Species, the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, the World Heritage Convention, as well as the relevant marine pollution instruments under the International Maritime Organization. And more so for the uh, land-based uh, uh, protocols, the global plan of action, again, being used successfully. All these are another major achievement. We have talked of how they've been effective uh, in the execution of GF-funded projects under the relevant GF portfolio. And the systematic uh, pattern of the, the, uh, the articles which are in all the conventions and all the protocols which are related to each other and therefore leading to that coherent synergistic implementation. So these are some of the major achievements. To conclude, regional seas program uh, has been implemented through these regional seas conventions and action plans, as well as the protocols. They've made great achievements over the last four years as, uh, of the existence for the sustainable management of the marine and the coastal resources. Many lessons have been learned over the 40 years. We still continue to learn as the program continues to grow, as it continues to be nurtured despite the challenges faced along the way. But as the program unveils a renewed and re-energized ambition to further enhance and strengthen its implementation, it's important as a prerequisite that political will which will in turn support and ensure the financial base of the program, the solid legal basis, and the sound and effective institutional uh, structure uh, then uh, continues to be able then to maintain uh, this uh, 40 years achievement and to enable the program to continue to grow to the next 40 years and beyond. Thank you very much for listening.